Folks, how's it going? R&D Diesel here today, and we are going to be replacing the water pump on my 97 Ford F350. This truck has the 7.3 liter power stroke diesel engine. Now this process should be very similar for pretty much any of your 1994 to 2003 Ford 7.3 power stroke diesel engines. Now 94-95s are going to be a little bit different in their water pump style. Their thermosets are a little bit different, thermoset housing is a little different, but other than that, they're basically the same shape and everything. In addition to the water pump, I got a bunch of antifreeze and I also got a bunch of distilled water to use. Now I like to use this Fleet SCA Precharge. Now SCA is your supplemental coolant additives. It's something that you really need for diesel engines because if you don't have those supplemental coolant additives it can cause something called cavitation which is where essentially you have small vapor pockets inside of your coolant that can actually punch a hole through your cylinder block and that's definitely not good. Underneath the truck right now I am on the driver's side and I'm going to start by draining out all of the coolant in the radiator. Go ahead and grab that drink valve and let's go ahead and open it up. It's just a piece of plastic. So Now if you're like me and you voluntarily added more complexity to your truck, you've got an intercooler like I do, then we'll have to go ahead and remove this intercooler too. Give ourselves some more room to work. Now if you've got one of these super duties with an intercooler and it's basically just a either a 716 or in my case I'm using an 11 millimeter to remove the clamp that holds on the intercooler tube. Go ahead and remove my upper radiator hose. Now, let's say it's just a centered clamp here on the very bottom. This is one of the factory ones that you just squeeze together with a pair of pliers. Got my upper radiator hose free. And it's going to just come right off there. After looking at this whole system, one of the things I indeed realized was that to pull out the bolts that are holding on the water pump pulley, I'm actually going to need to pull off the fan clutch. Now fan clutches are notorious for being hard to pull off. And one of the things you'll notice is the very front of this, it says right hand thread on fan clutch. So basically what that means is that there's this large bolt right here that holds on the fan clutch. That's the one that you see here on my truck. It looks like it's all mangled up from the previous owner, not me entirely. Now for my 97 Ford F350, it takes a 1 and 7 8 wrench for the fan clutch. Now the only thing is that if you try to get a 1 and 7 8 inch wrench in there, you'll see that it doesn't actually fit. It's just, there's not enough space in there for it to get through. Now one of the things you could probably do is you can grind down the face of the wrench so that it actually will fit and become a dedicated fan clutch wrench. Or you can do what I did and you can get a flat plate of steel and make your own. So I <laughs> spent a good part of the day making my own wrench. But this thing goes right on there, and what you do is you set it on, and then you take a hammer, big good hammer, the biggest one you got, and you just hit the heck out of it. Now the idea here is that the momentum from your hammer will actually break the threads loose until it is finally free. I'm going to go ahead and pull off this fan shroud. There appear to be two bolts up top that I'm going to go ahead and loosen first so we can get this sucker free. Got myself an 8mm wrench right now. Just gonna go ahead and get these loose. Alright, so now we're looking down at the fan and I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew it. And it comes off just like any normal bolt. And it's just right hand thread, so I'm you know, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And this is where it's good to have this fan shroud loose so that we can pull everything out at the same time. Yep, there it goes. Up and just just about enough, and there we go. Got the whole fan out. If we can get access to these four main bolts here. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is go ahead and loosen all of these up. And one thing is, if they are pretty stuck on there, a neat trick that I learned is that you can get a hammer and you can, with a nice tight fitting socket or just regular wrench, and you can hit the end of your wrench and it will help loosen it up. I'm going to go ahead and get my 15 millimeter socket set up to loosen and I'm going to put it on this tensioner here and then we can go ahead and put this down like we are loosening a bolt and then we can get the serpentine belt pulled off one of the pulleys and loosened up. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish loosening up these bolts. We can just pull that off. Your hose coming from the water pump. 
Okay, at this point I'm going to go ahead and remove this thermostat housing right here. I'm going to be using a 5 16 socket, an 8 millimeter also works. Now the trickiest one of these to get to is going to be the one way in the back down below, but I'm just using my a long extension here and I'm able to go right behind it. Okay, now we can go ahead and remove this thermostat housing. And this is where you see that these things can get really rusted up and that's why I'm replacing mine. And my thermostat here is only 20,000 miles old or so, but I figure it's not a bad idea to replace it since I'm already going in here. There we go. On top of the truck, I'm going to go ahead and remove this hose right here that goes to the bottom of the degas bottle. Now, replacing or pulling off this degas bottle hose isn't entirely necessary, but I'm replacing mine anyways, so I figured I might as well since I'm already here. I'm underneath the truck now on the driver's side. And I'm going to go ahead and you can see Ford has this nice factory screw here. And this is holding on the lower radiator hose. Go ahead and undo that. And then I'm also going to undo this clamp here that's holding on the line that goes from this lower radiator hose T to the degas bottle hose here. So my luck would have it, I had the wonderful pleasure of figuring out that there still is a significant amount of coolant in there. Whenever I pulled out the lower radiator hose and the degas bottle from that T there. I tried pulling off this elbow. It's just a 10 millimeter up top. And there's another 10 millimeter right down below. All right. Okay, one last thing to do here before we go ahead and pull off the water pump, because I'm sure I'm probably gonna have to reuse it, is I'm gonna grab my adjustable wrench and pull off this heater hose adapter. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this temperature sensor probe wire there get that out of the way we'll have to transfer that over from the water pumps later and i'm going to go ahead and grab the 10 millimeter 10 millimeter wrench and work my way around the water pump to pull out the bolts ah. let's break those suckers loose all right at this point i think i've got all the bolts loose and there you go water pump just comes right out there and See if I catch some of that water just running down. No, no, it's hopeless. Yeah, there we go. Here's the water pump. Pump off, you can see what it looks like underneath the front cover here. My 7.3 power stroke. And of course, right there in the middle of the screen, that's the fan cam position sensor. And you can see, looking around this thing, it looks a little bit dirty, but nothing all that bad. Main thing here is that you can see that it doesn't have any pits or any cavitation bubbles, is what you're looking for. That's a bad sign. But seeing that this is nice and smooth surface all around means this truck's been maintained throughout its life and it's had proper supplemental coolant additives put inside of its coolant, so it should hopefully be good to go for years to come. Alright, so now I just have a, taken a knife. You can use a razor blade as well. And it's carefully going along and scraping off any old gasket material. Now take a look at the water pump, I went ahead and installed the seal, and one of the nice things about it is, as you can see, it has these little kind of tabs sticking out on them, and that actually seems to hold in place quite well, so I just have it all pushed in. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and see if I can set this water pump carefully in its place. Now one of the things I'm going to do, I like doing this to all my bolts, I take a little bit of dab of grease, and I just put it around the threads. And that way, it'll hopefully help keep this stuff from seizing up later on down the road. Because this is aluminum and st with steel bolts, and that's never a good combination. They always like to seize up. And this is my way to kind of avoid that at all cost. All right, now I got all these bolts put in, and a lot of them you have to really kind of do by feel. But I've got out my torque wrench, and I've got it set to 15 foot-pounds. That's what the spec is for these bolts. And really, the way you should do this is you, you should kind of go on opposite sides. That way you don't risk torquing the housing and warping it, cracking it. All right, we're now going to go ahead and install this water pump elbow. Don't forget to put that O-ring seal on it. Go ahead, slide that in there, and we'll torque these bolts down. There's two of them. We'll torque them down to 15 foot-pounds as well. Well, my water pump came with this little extra adapter that I don't need, but and it's not going to really work very well for my heater hose. So I'm going to take the old O-ring off of my old one, and I'm just going to take the O-ring of this new part and use that instead. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of pipe thread sealer. Yeah, it probably isn't exactly necessary, but the old one had some on it, so I figured I might as well use it. I right, went ahead and grabbed the, temp the temperature sending unit from the old water pump, put some thread sealant on there, and then we'll just screw that in and snug it up. And that should be snug enough for that. And then just pop that connector back on there. Next, I'll go ahead and take my heater hose, and I'll set that on there and tighten its hose clamp back down. All right, so I'm underneath the truck, and I've got my new hose clamp on here. And I'm going to go ahead and push this thing on there. All right, and also bear in mind that this T fitting here has to be pointing downwards whenever you go to reinstall. Squeeze that on there. And grab this hose that goes up to the degas bottle. Let's see if I can sneak it up there somehow. And you got to make sure that it has this little hook part down below so that we can actually access it. The bottle hose, I went ahead and routed it to where it actually is in contact with the frame. And it runs on the other side of my positive battery terminal uh, or battery cable. You can see this here is the degas bottle line. I figured it would be better to have that thing rub through than to have... <laughs> Uh, positive terminal of my battery cable rubbed through. So, there's that. I'm going to go ahead and install the water pump pulley. Okay, so now i got to go ahead and install the serpentine belt here on the truck. Okay, so I've got snaked around everything. Alternator, air conditioner. And now all we have left is the tensioner itself. <sighs> Oh, there we go. You can use the serpentine belt to hold the water pump pulley. And so now we can torque these down to their spec, which is, it's 12 to 18 foot pounds, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do 15. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put in the fan. Oh, we gotta make sure, we gotta put in the fan housing at the same time. Oh, the fan tray. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and thread on fan clutch. I can just, just startle to get this thing on. And of course, I put the fan shroud on backwards. Oh, snap. oh, come on! Thread on! Thread on there, for crying out loud! This is hopeless! Good grief! Who in the heck designed this? Oh, right, Ford. Okay, so as much as I hate to say it, that's probably one of the most frustrating things to do for this whole job thus far. Getting that fan clutch on there is a pain. So, what I ended up doing is I grabbed it. Let's see if I can show you. You grab it from the back side here. And you kind of reach both of your hands around and you can just barely grab that fan clutch and you can apply pressure on it. Because otherwise, you just can't rotate it enough in order for those threads to grab. Okay, at this point, let me go ahead and grab my wrench. Now, fortunately, by design, these things actually tighten themselves, too. So, once you get snug, it's not coming off. This fan shroud actually just kind of sets in on below, down below. It sits on top of some little stilts that hold it in place. All right, now, in case you're wondering why it is that I haven't installed the sobo yet, it's not that I have... I had forgotten is that I understand that this water pump is a centripetal pump. So with that being said, it operates on having basically by spinning this fluid around so it needs some sort of priming to make sure that it works. And I want to make sure that this thing's primed. So I'm going to go ahead and pour some antifreeze in here and basically prime the system. Again, when you are refilling your antifreeze, this is a perfect time to make sure that you have the supplemental cool additives that you need to make sure that your diesel engine will last. All right, so I just stuck my thermostat in there, and this thing's a little bit over full, so it's actually letting all the coolant out. Well, I got everything all buttoned back up on my truck, filled it back full of coolant, and now all that's left pretty much is to take this thing for a test spin and just to make sure that it doesn't have any leaks. And then what you wanna do here is make sure you get it up to operating temperature 
that way you can know for sure that the thermostat's opening and everything's flowing through the water pump like it should and hopefully you won't have any problems but that pretty much does it here today and i hope this video helps you all out hopefully it helped you in the case that you need to change your water pump or you need to service your cooling system in the meantime thank you all so much for watching and happy trucking